Now I'm not going to apologize for the message I'm bringing today because a pastor must bring a message of this type occasionally, not every Sunday of course, but quite often, to remind the people of their responsibility in the work of God. I'm speaking on this subject when nine is more than ten. You know there comes a time in your life when nine is more than ten. And that has to do, of course, with Christian giving. I'm going to talk about that today. A lot of people don't like to be reminded of the responsibility. But the pastor must remind people of their obligation in the work of God. God's business is the greatest in all the world. God would never leave his people without some kind of understanding or knowledge as to what to do about the matter of supporting his work. So God gave us a divine plan that runs all the way through the Bible in respect to what belongs to him. And of course, we know that is the tithe. One tenth of a person's income is the tithe. Now, God never intended for unsaved people to support his work. God does expect his people to support his work because it's God's business. And God wants his people to do it. Do it for their own good. And God, if he got hard up against it, he could turn stones into money. But God wants his people to take care of his business and God will use their means to promote his work and God will reward them for it and bless them for it while they're on the earth. I remind the old tightwad, the old skin plant and never give any money into God's work. And so the church became concerned about it. They said, well, he never gives a dime. He's a member of the church. He, uh, he comes to church here and then he expects maybe when he's uh, died to have his body brought in for the funeral and so forth and he expects the church to kindly pray for him and look after him whenever he's in need never gives anything so they decided that they would send a committee down and pay him a visit and see if they could sell him on the truth and the idea of he should give into God's work so the committee went down and told him they said now dear brother we trying to get a little extra offering for home missions and he said no, I'm sure you're concerned about home missions he said, no, I'm not concerned about it. He said, you give money to home missions and the people down in the home office, they, they might just keep it themselves. They don't know what to do with it. Probably throw it away. They saw this getting nowhere fast. They said, well, uh, we have a project. We're trying to raise a little money for foreign missions. Well, he said, I'll tell you, I, I don't believe in them old foreign missions myself. said, I think we got too much needs to be done uh, here at home instead of sent it away off somewhere to foreign missions. And so there's getting nowhere fast there. So they said, well, I'll tell you, dear brother, you know the old cemetery down at the church has been there a long time. Long time. That He said, uh, uh, the people on the inside couldn't get out and the one on the outside don't want in, so what the name of how heavy you want a fence around it for? So they got nowhere fast in trying to get money out of him, so they left the old skint fed alone. But you know, God's people that love the Lord should appreciate the opportunity to be able to contribute into God's work. I do. Ever since God saved me, I'm trying to tithe and give offerings above my tithe in the work of God. And God's always taking care of my need. I believe the Bible and I look for God to take care of me as I sojourn and take care of me in my old days when I'm old and feeble and can't get about. And I'm looking for God to take care of me and I believe he will. Now I'm reading first of all from Proverbs chapter 3, found on page 673, if you care to turn there. Let's see what God has to say, not what I might think about it, but what does God have to say about it. Proverbs chapter 3, I want us to look at verses 9 and 10, page 673. See, when I give you the page number in the original Schofield reference Bible, you turn to the page number and find it real quickly. Now verses uh, 9 and 10. On the Lord with thy substance, with the first fruits of all thine increase, so shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. Now turn on over to chapter 11 of Proverbs. Chapter 11, look at verses 24 and 25. Here we find these words. There is a scattereth and yet increases, and there is that withholdeth more than a meat, but it tendeth to poverty. The liberal soul shall be made fat, and he that waters shall be watered also himself. Now I want you to turn to the last book in the Old Testament, the book of Malachi, just before the book of Matthew, of course. 
the book of Malachi. Let's take a look at Malachi chapter 3 and read two or three verses, page 982. And look at uh, beginning with verse 7. From the days of your fathers, you're gone away from my ordinances. You have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. But ye say, Wherein shall we return? Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, Wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. You're cursed with a curse. You have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring you all the tithes in this storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now here which saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven, and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. I will rebuke the devourer for your sake, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast a fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. Now you may say, now preacher Edwards, that's way over in the Old Testament. Yes, I know it is. Turn to Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6 for a verse of scripture. I want to read a couple of other verses, and then we'll get right into the message. Luke chapter 6. Take a look at that, will you please? Page 1081, verse 38. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that you met with all, it shall be measured to you again. Now turn over to 2 Corinthians chapter 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. I'll give you the page number in just a moment as soon as I get to it. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. And I want you to look at some verses found here. It's page 1236. Uh, page 1236. And let's look at verses, verse, and begin with verse 6 of 2 Corinthians 9. But this I say, he would sow it sparingly, shall read sparingly. And he who soweth boundless shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purpose in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always have all sufficient in all things may abound to every good work. Now there's many, many scriptures that I could give you. Let me give you one more. I want you to turn with you, please. I'll be giving you some during the message. I want to point out what the Bible has to say about these things. I want you to turn to the last chapter of 1 Corinthians. And let me give you a verse of scripture found there. 1 Corinthians, uh, the um, uh, last chapter. If you turn there, please. And let me give you this verse of scripture. Page uh, 12, 28, chapter 16. Now concerning the collection of the saints, I have given orders to the church of Galatia, even so do you, upon the first day of the week. Now the first day of the week is Sunday. Let every one of you lay by him in store as God has prospered him that there be no gathering when I come. Now here we find that Paul said on the Lord's Day on Sunday is the time to give of your means and the work of God is one of the best times to do it, of course. Now the Bible has three ways, three means of giving. I'll mention these three and I want God to speak to our hearts today. I'm going to say this. I have never yet in my entire ministry, and I've been preaching the gospel for 43 years, I have never been able to develop a Christian or a church member into a strong spiritual giant for God that rebelled against gospel giving or against tithing as taught in the Bible. Now usually people that are both spiritual and people you can develop and help and make strong Christians out of them are those that love the Lord and they're always glad to give to help out financially in the work of God. Now the, the Bible lets us know that tithe is the Lord. In fact, in the Garden of Eden, God said, I have many of trees, many trees in this garden. And he said, uh, there's one tree, it's mine. Don't touch it. You know what happened? They touched that tree and Adam and Eve fell in the garden. That was God's tree. Now as you serve the Lord, all the way through the Bible from Genesis right on through Revelation, you find the principle of the tithe. That tithe belongs to God. That tithe is not yours, really. It belongs to God. And I'll say this on the authority of God's Word, that if you give that dime out of every dollar that you earn, you ought to tithe your gross income, give that dime out of every dollar, God will take that 90 cents, and bless it and use it and you can accomplish more or buy more 
with 90 cents than you can with a dollar. Now, God works it out for you. Now, that's what I mean when I say nine is more than ten. You give God his part and take care of God's business, and God will take care of your business. I preached and preached and tried to help God's people, and some people never get out of the mud. The more they try to do, the deeper they get stuck in debt and in the mud, and they can't do anything for God. They can't get their head above the ground. And you check on them, you find they, they never tithe. I've seen others that tithe their income, although they may have a small income, some a large income, and they tithe and God blesses them and they get on their feet, so to speak, and they're able to uh, buy what they need and carry on for God. I always contend that young people, you that, uh, that are young, that's just starting out, if you have a job, you ought to make that a policy to give God that tithe. And then if you want to give an offer above that well and good, God will bless you for it. But that tithe is the Lord's. That's not yours. When you spend your tithe, you're taking God's money and spending that on yourself. Now, do you think that's pleasing to the Lord? Absolutely not. Now, I'm talking to God's people. I'm not talking to the unsaved. God does require them to give. They need to get saved. Now, in Genesis chapter 20, verse 22, it says this one. Uh, this stone which I set for a pillar shall be God's house. For all that thou give me, I will surely give the tenth unto thee. Here you have a man by the name of Jacob uh, saying he's going to tithe his income. In the book of Leviticus, the Bible said the tithe is the Lord's. It's not yours. It's not mine. It's the Lord's. The tithe is the Lord's. Now you have three means of giving in the Bible. Number one is the tithe. That's a dime out of a dollar. That's one dollar out of ten, ten dollars out of a hundred. Then you have the method of giving half. Now Zacchaeus gave half of his income. Luke chapter 19 and verse 8 tells you so. Then you have a poor widow woman that gave all she had. Now you give a tithe, give half, or give all. That's up to you. Now God does require you to give half your income. He does require you to give all of your income. But if you want to, that'd be your business. But God does expect you to give at least one dime out of a dollar. When this church gives me a little money to keep the wolf away from the door, and so my wife can go buy a few groceries and so forth, the first thing I do, the first thing I do with that money, I take out God's tithe. That's God's holy money. That's not mine. I don't want to be guilty of taking God's. That's God's money. I take out that tithe, and I set that aside, and that's God's money. That goes into the, the work of the Lord, and I, I don't dare to keep that. And then because God's been so good to me, I say, now, Lord, you've been good to me. You've blessed my family. You've taken care of my need. And I love you, Lord. And I'm going to give you a little love offering. In addition to that tithe, I slip in a love offering in addition to my tithe. I've been doing that a long time. And I've seen handfuls on purpose. I've seen the blessings of God come my way. I've seen God take care of me when I thought it just couldn't be done. Yes, some time ago, something happened. I just knew. I just knew that I was going to have to buy a motor for my automobile. I thought the thing had, to had to been torn up. I had been torn up. And I, I talked to a, a mechanic. And he said, you're just going to have to have a new motor preach. That's all there is to it. I began to call around to try to find out, find one. And I saw it cost about five or uh, six hundred dollars to get a used motor. I went down here to the garage down here on the Daniel Road, pulled in there. I asked the man to check my motor. And take a look at it and ask him if he knew where I could find one. And I went back to pick it up and he handed me the bill, uh, about uh, two or three dollars. Wasn't a thing wrong, just a little a bolt or something had come loose and he just fixed the thing back and that is it. I believe God helped me there. Now, beloved, I believe that with all of my heart. I could have paid out five or six hundred dollars when it only cost me about two or three dollars. I forget the exact amount. Now, God can take care of these little things. Now, God will test you and try you when you start tithing. You may say, well, I just can't quite do it. I don't have income sufficient. Well, you can't afford not to do it, dear soul. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm trying to be honest. You can't afford as a Christian not to be at least a tither. And if you give above your tithe, God will bless you for it. We have some young people here in the church. They have jobs and they're doing the right thing. They're tithing. God will bless them for it. There's a man many years ago, 16-year-old boy, the name of Colgate, William Colgate. And he, he couldn't uh, get enough money at home. His daddy couldn't make enough money for him to live. And he went out to find him a job. 
He went to the old sea captain. He said, sea captain, I, I, can you help me get a job? He said, son, what can you do? He said, well, all I know how to do is make soap and candles. He said, son, I'll help you get started in the soap business and the candle business. But he said, let me tell you something, son. Uh, how old are you? He said, I'm 16. He said, let me tell you, when you start making the soap, I want you to be sure you give a full bar of soap, a full pound. Don't cheat anybody. Be honest. You give them what they want. And then, son, not only that, I want you to give your tithes in the work of God. William Colgate did that. He started out making soap. And you know the story. William Colgate became a multimillionaire. And before he died, he was given millions in the work of God. The turnover here used to be over here in Decor that operated in big uh, earth-moving machinery. Well, he could hardly make the end beat. And he's a Christian, loved God. And, and he started tithing. The devil said, you're starving to death. You'll never be making in business. Before the turnover died, he was given 90% of his income in the work of God, only keeping 10% out, and he was a multimillionaire. I could mention a half a dozen men that went into business that way and began to tithe and became millionaires. The devil said they can't do it. Now listen to me. You owe that to God and yourself and your family and your church to tithe your income into the work of God. You ought to do it. I wouldn't dare. I wouldn't dare to try to start a business. I wouldn't dare to uh, try to make a living without uh, giving God his first because God is collector, a good collector. There's a man one time said he had 500 members of a tithers. Some man said, you mean you have 500 church members of tithers? He said, yes. All 500? He said, yes. Of course, of course, only about 200 tithers of the church and God has to collect the other in a way he can get it. Now, God is a good collector and God knows how to collect and God is a blesser and he knows how to give you handfuls on purpose. And when you take care of God's business, God in turn takes care of your business. Oh, you say now, preacher, I just can't afford it. You can't afford not to. Don't kid yourself. You can't afford not to. You lose more by not doing it than you would if you, you don't lose anything you give to God. And God will not be indebted to any man. God's not going to let you owe him anything. God's going to give back to you more than you could ever give him. God keeps the record. In 1 Corinthians 16, verse 2, I read it to you. On the first day of the week, let him lay by store every one of you as God's prosper you. Not just some of you, everyone that has an income. If you don't make but a dollar, a dime of that is God's. If you make five dollars, fifty cents of that is the Lord. If you make ten dollars, a dollar that is God. That's not yours. Now, you may take God's money, but God's not pleased with that. And God don't forget that. And there may come a time when God can pull you out some handfuls on purpose. God will withhold those blessings. Malachi chapter 3 tells you that. And God will collect that some way or another. One day a man said, to ask, a preacher said, Where's old brother John? So I hadn't seen John in some time. Where's John? Oh, he said, John's up in the hospital having his ties took out. Now God knows how to take your ties out. You might have to go to the hospital to get it done. But he knows how to, he knows how to bless you. He knows how to make your shoes last longer, your clothes last longer, make you get more miles on your car. God knows how to do that in little ways you never dreamed of. All God expects of you is to believe Him. Now you can displease believe God and go on like some of you are going. Rob God, take God's money, never give any offers. Go right on. All right. You're making your road hard. You're making your road hard. Your pastor's trying to help you. You and the radio listen audience, this preacher's trying to help you. The tithe is the Lord's. Leviticus chapter 27, verse 30. And all the tithe of the land, or the seed of the land, or the fruit of the tree, it is the Lord's. It is holy unto the Lord. That's Leviticus chapter 27, verse 30. The Bible says, holy unto God. That tithe is, it's the Lord's. God required Israel to tithe. And Israel lived under the Lord. If they tithe under the Lord, we, how much more should we be willing to tithe living under grace? Oh, you say, preach them. Did Jesus mention tithing? Well, let's see in Matthew 23 and verse 23 if he did. Jesus said, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you pay the tithe of men and eyes and cunning, and have omitted the widow matter of the law and judgment, mercy and faith. These you ought to have done and not leave the other done done. Jesus said you should have tithed. That's right. He said in your tithing you leave other things undone, and you shouldn't leave them undone. It's good that you tithe. You should tithe, he said. Now, if you are given, it will be given unto you. As you give, so shall it be given unto you. I read that from the scripture. And God promised to bless that tither and open up the windows of heaven and pour him out a blessing. Now, you don't give just because you want to get something from God. You give because it's right. And you give because God wants you to. 
You give because you love the Lord. You give because you're a Christian and appreciate the fact you're saved. You give because it's God's work. It's God's business. And there's no greater business on the face of this earth than God's business. You give because you love the Lord. And God will in turn come back to you with more blessings. Now you may face some testings. The devil will try you and make you think you're going to starve to death. You're not going to even pay your bills, but you stick in there, brother. You stick in there. God will take care of you in due time. When the devil comes testing you and you yield to the devil, you're the loser. You're the loser. You can work your fingers to the quick, so to speak, and still can't get your head above the water. You're the loser. Now you honor God with your income. You tithe your gross income, and God will bless you. And you'll be surprised what will happen to you. It'll develop you spiritually. There's a man, you know, many years ago in Radford, Virginia. I went there for a meeting. The pastor met me on Monday. He said, preach it's on. I said, it's on. He said, what do you mean? Uh, he said, it's on, brother. He said, we had an old disgruntle here in the church. Every time I mentioned tithing or giving, he got mad. There's no wet here. And he fussed, he quarreled, and he got to leave the church mad. And he said, I had a teenage boy as mean, almost a devil himself. So he'd drive up and down these streets, up and down the highway, and he was mean. Said we couldn't get him to church. He said yesterday morning we had a visiting preacher, and he preached on uh, uh, what Christians should do. At the close of that service, that old codger that was such a tight one came down, got right with God, apologized to the church, told the people it's wrong, asked God to forgive him. He said people started praising God and weeping and shouting the victory. And he said that night his son that wouldn't come to church came and got saved last night. Oh, he said, preacher, it's on, it's on. That old man had locked his own son out of the family of God because of his attitude toward Christian giving. You can cause God to withhold his blessings from your family. I'm talking about the head of the house now. You can cause God to withhold his blessings from your family by robbing God of the tithes and offerings that you owe to the Lord. You ought to consider that. If you're the head of your house, God will hold you responsible. And you need to realize that God will bless you if you give. It's not yours, the tithe is the Lord's. In addition to that, you ought to slip in a love offering for Jesus because you love him and God will bless you. The Bible speaks of taking tithes as robbery. You wouldn't want anybody to call you a robber, would you? God said the people of the nation of Israel was robbers. They robbed him of their tithes and offerings. Not only would you be robbing God, you rob yourself, you rob your church, you rob your family, you hinder your own efforts. You could do a lot, lot more and be blessed if you obey God. Not only that, you lay up treasures in heaven. Now somebody says, well, I'll tell you, preacher, one reason I don't tie, they put up these excuses. Now remember, nine is more than ten. I stand up on the authority of God's word. I believe this book. I know by experience that nine is more than ten when you give into God's word. This is tape number 207. In case you understand it, nine is more than ten. God will take that nine dollars if you have ten dollars and you'll give God his tithe as his anyway. God will take that nine dollars and you can buy far more with that nine dollars than you could have if you'd have kept that extra dollar. God will see that. That's his responsibility. It's your responsibility to believe God and God's responsibility to take care of the situation. Now some people say, well, I would tithe, but... I don't know my income. Don't kid yourself. If you went to somewhere at the grocery store or somewhere to pay some bills, they didn't give you the right change back. It wouldn't take you long to find out about that. Yes, you know what your income is. Not only that, but some say, well, I'm in debt. Well, you'll probably stay in it if you don't start tithing and doing what God wants you to do. You may never get out. Some say, well, I must provide for my family. Your first provision, rightly, is tithing your income in the work of God. That's the first place. That's first base in providing for your family. And God will move in and help you out with your family. Not only that, but some say, I can't spare it. I, I just have so many bills to pay. I can't spare it. I can't afford it. You can't afford not to. When God reaches around and collects himself, he takes interest along with that. Yes, beloved, you can spare it because you're going to pay it anyway if you don't give it willfully from your heart. Some say, well, I make too much money. I, would, I wouldn't mind tithing, preacher, if I only made $50, $5 wouldn't be so much. I make a, a $500, and, and I, I just can't afford to give that $50. Well, i tell you one of the best ways in the world to solve that. Get out on your knees, ask God to cut your salary back to about $200, and you wouldn't be, have to give it $20. Wouldn't that be fair? 
That's the fairest way in the world. If your income is so great that you can't give that tithe, just pray God will cut it back because you probably do it anyway. Eventually, if you don't do what you should do, it may be coming around the corner anyway if you don't obey God. And so you say, I just, I just make too much money. Well, God will take care of that. He can handle that very well. I'm going to give you some surprises that you'll get if you'll be a tither. I'm going to give you these surprises. Listen to it now. I challenge you. Nine is more than ten. Nine is more than ten. I challenge you to prove God. I started proving God years ago. God's taking care of my business. God's taking care of me. Listen to me. God is taking care of me and fed me. And I've pastored churches almost 40 years. And I've pastored churches that haven't been able to take care of my need. And God has taken care of me some way, somehow. God takes care of us. God will take care of you. Now, this is what's going to be your surprise. Number one, how easy it is to tithe. It's real easy to tithe. If you ever start, you wouldn't stop. You'd be blessed. It's so easy to just take a dime out of a dollar. It's God's. It's real easy. Secondly, you'd be surprised how far the nine-tenths will go. You'll say, I had ten dollars, gave God his. I'm surprised how much I got for nine dollars. Yes, God will take care of that. And then you'll be surprised how you grow spiritually. You become spiritual. You start growing spiritually. And God will bless you. You'll be surprised how you can see the blessings of God and see the hand of God in your life. And once in a while, my wife and myself will talk about God's handfuls on purpose that comes our way in some way or another. God takes care of us. And then you'll be surprised the, account, the amount you'll give. You'll be surprised. See, God keeps a record on His book as to what you give. And you'll be surprised how much God's got on that book. God keeps a record of every penny. And you'll be surprised how much you give when you come, say, to the end of the year. How much you've given that year. And that's God's. Then you'll, you'll be surprised how to ease your conscience. You know why people get mad at the preacher when he preaches on tithing and giving? They're not giving like they should. They're not tithing. People that tithe and give, they don't get mad at the preacher. They say amen once in a while. It might hurt, but they say amen. Praise the Lord. Preach, that's it. You tell the truth. Now, people that give what they should give never get mad at the preacher for preaching on giving. Only the ones that don't give as they should get mad at the preacher. Now, you need to realize it'll give you ease of conscience. I want to tell you this in closing. Sometimes ago, there's a... Uh, a holiness preacher had a tent meeting and they were really going to town in that tent meeting seemed like and, and he meant to get his offerings out of those people and he wired the pews up and then he put a button up in the pulpit and all he had to do when he told, told the people everybody give a dollar to stand or five dollars to stand he'd pop that button and they couldn't sit still and have to jump up and so he uh, said alright how many people will give up five dollars tonight bang he hit that button and up came those people he said I thank you that, that's under God you know you're standing as under God and you stand and say you give five dollars well you know they dismissed that night there's five five young Baptist men attended that meeting and they're sitting in the back of that tent and you know when the people left that night they started looking over that tent and they found five electrocuted Baptists down in the shade see they they, they they just rather die than to give now you have a lot of hard headed Baptists like that Beloved, listen to me. You give. I, I'm, I'm trying to tell you how to get God's blessings on you. I'm trying to tell you how to grow and how God will work with you and how God will take care of your need if you look after His business. Now, if you don't look after God's business, you think God's going to help you look after yours? No, sir. He'll let you root hog and die poor before He'll do it. But you take care of God's business and God will be responsible to help you take care of your business. Amen? Now, you ought to do it to the glory of God. I could give you illustration, 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 one after another, how the blessing of God comes when you give like you should. Now, let me say this in closing. Nine is more than ten. Nine is more than ten when you give God that tenth. God will see to it. He's obligated to do so. He said in this book he'd do it. God will see to it that that nine is more than ten in your operation. And if you don't do it, God will see to it that that uh, it's going to cost you. It'll cost you. It's certain as I'm speaking to you. He said he withdraw his blessing. And it will. Now God will bless you. You are the Lord. Now don't, let me ask you to do this. And you see what happens to you. When you take God's tithe out. That's, that's his. You say Lord that's yours. That's not mine. That's the holy tithe. The principle of tithe runs all the way through the Bible. Then reach back and 
Give Jesus a little love offering. Say, Lord, you've been so good. I'm going to give you a little love offering this week. Slip a love offering. It may not be much, but whatever you do, a dollar, two dollars, whatever, give Jesus a love offering. He's been real good to you and see what happens. Amen. God wants to bless you and God will bless you. Remember this. Nine is more than ten. Stand to your feet. Our Father, I pray this morning that you'll take the message and bless your dear people. We love thy people, God. We're not fussing on them this morning. We're trying to help them. We want to help them. We want to see them do well. We want to see them do right. We want your blessings on them. Lord, many of them think they can't do it, but the problem is, the fact of the matter is, they can't afford not to. God bless them and have your way and speak to every heart here and in the radio listening audience. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Debbie's going to play for us. If there's somebody in this building that's unsaved, somebody that's backslidden on God, somebody needs to come forward for any reason, then you just walk down while she plays and stands there. So will you? Just come right down and we'll help you. Maybe you hadn't been tithing your income. Maybe you hadn't been giving love offerings. While Debbie's playing, why don't you just deep down in your heart and just say, Lord, I will. I'll do what's right, Lord. I'll, I'll give you your tithe that's yours. It's not mine. I've been taking your tithe. It's not right. Lord, I'm going to slip you a little love offering along. Why don't you just make up your mind you're going to do that now? That's a matter between you and God. I wouldn't ask you to raise your hand or come forward on that. That's a matter between you and God. God loves a cheerful giver, not not of necessity, not because you think you got to. You don't have to do anything but die and face God in the judgment. But you do it because you love the Lord. You want to have a part in the great ministry. We have missionaries here. We have the radio ministry. We have camps. We have support. We have orphans home that have support. We have jail ministry. We have support. We have a good rounded out ministry here at Northside. And your investment goes a long way in the work of God here at Northside. God bless you as you make up your mind what you're going to do.